Dearest Indian friends, greetings from Vallicale 88 and welcome back. I am Caterina Brazzi Castracane, I am an historian and I am here in collaboration with the Italian Culture Century in Delhi. Today in particular I am here to share with you the second appointment realized during this month of December 2020, dedicated to the rediscovery of the Italian city of Milan. Actually, what we are going to talk about uh, today is uh, related uh, with uh, fashion, art uh, and architecture. And we, we are going uh, to understand together um, how it was possible that during uh, the centuries uh, these uh, three main categories would eventually became uh, the uh, most remarkable pilasters of uh, the contemporary idea of Milan. First of all, it is important to remember that uh, together with London, Paris and New York, Milan is uh, one of the four major fashion capital of the world. This uh, not only means that Milan is one of the best places where enjoy shopping in the world, but also that uh, the town is uh, remarked uh, by the presence of an entire uh, district uh, completely destined uh, to fashion and named after it. I am talking about uh, the so named fashion quadrilateral, that uh, area that you can see using uh, this uh, map is uh, bordered as uh, a real quadrilateral uh, by four main streets and uh, completely dominated by the presence of important and international shops and boutiques. Among these uh, streets, uh, the most important uh, is uh, Via Monte Napoleone, a uh, street that was uh, open uh, during the first part uh, of the 19th century and uh, named after the figures of the Emperor Napoleon III, the same uh, man who was crowned as King of Italy inside the Cathedral of Milan, as we have already seen together during the first lecture of uh, this month. In this case, uh, Via Monte Napoleone was completely retransformed during uh, the second part uh, of the 20th century to be one of the most uh, chic and expensive uh, streets in the world. This area, the uh, fashion quadrilateral area, and uh, in particular these uh, streets uh, are the perfect theater to celebrate uh, an important uh, and traditional appointment uh, of the contemporary life uh, of Milan, the Milan Fashion Week. This uh, huge uh, um, manifestation is so popular to be compared to the traditional celebration of a carnival in Venice. Uh, for us uh, and for uh, the aim of this conference, it is also important to notice that uh, the establishment of uh, the National Chamber for Italian Fashion and uh, uh, of this uh, uh, manifestation uh, could be considered uh, as uh, an arriving point uh, of a long tradition about fashion that was uh, able to generate the idea that Milan is a synonym of uh, elegance. Uh, this means uh, that uh, hidden in different parts of this town, we can find uh, several kind of examples uh, um, that uh, help us uh, to understand the history of elegance uh, in Milan and also that uh, during the centuries uh, this city was uh, uh, transformed uh, to be exactly uh, the perfect uh, icon of uh, a cultured uh, city. Uh, among this kind of example, we can uh, discover uh, just five minutes walking far from Via Monte Napoleone, Villa Necchi Campiglio. Um, 
an amazing example of private residence in downtown that is now a sort of icon of art deco. In particular, this <coughs> residence that was realized for the will of this important family, the Necchi Campiglio I, was designed by the hand of Piero Portaluppi, an important architect of that period. And it was realized to be a sort of example of power and richness of this family that was part of the rich and elegant industrial middle class of Milan of that first part of the 20th centuries. In particular, the private residence was realized uh, to be a sort of uh, um, new interpretation of uh, the original suburban residence of aristocracy and was uh, thought uh, to be uh, a complex uh, with uh, the palace, the garden, the swimming pool and the tennis in accord uh, of uh, the traditional uh, layout uh, of the noble homes, the villa was uh, realized uh, with uh, two main uh, floors. Uh, first of all, the ground floor completely destined uh, to the public uh, activities of this family and their guests. And uh, uh, the first floor destinated uh, to the private part uh, of the house, including uh, bedrooms and bath. Um, the ground floor that was uh, realized to be the perfect uh, and prestigious uh, reception area was also dominated uh, by the presence of uh, this important and magnificent veranda realized to be a sort of a reinterpretation of a greenhouse inside the house, uh, to be a sort of a link between the garden and the house, and realized on the corner of the palace, and realized just using wood and glass. Uh, this room was uh, used uh, as uh, the perfect uh, um, reinterpretation of the idea of a dining room, an open-air dining room, uh, posed to be a sort of a continuation of the garden inside the house. But other important uh, spaces uh, inside uh, the house uh, are uh, uh, the icons uh, of uh, this power and this uh, taste so popular during uh, the Thursday. Uh, in particular, in this case, it is also important uh, to uh, remark that, that uh, here innovation was really translated uh, into both comfort and efficiency. And uh, <clears throat> this means that inside the house you can find uh, um, different examples of uh, modern features, uh, including uh, lifts, but also including uh, sliding doors, uh, as uh, the example that you can see using uh, this uh, picture that uh, is a sort of uh, a real uh, representation of uh, uh, something that uh, should be useful but also should be beauty. This is uh, uh, the most important aim of the taste of that time. The same is possible to say about uh, this important marble uh, chimney that uh, uh, dominated uh, the smoking room to be uh, the touchable proof uh, of uh, the power and uh, the richness of this family that want to emulate uh, the uh, way of life uh, of the aristocracy before them. Since 2001, uh, the villa is property of uh, FI, uh, the National Trust for Italy. 
and for us uh, it's also important uh, to remember that uh, FAI was uh, founded uh, in Milan in 1975 and since uh, that uh, here this uh, institution uh, um, works uh, to restore and to take care not only of the cultural um, heritage in Milan but uh, of the cultural heritage in Italy. Maybe are you going to understand uh, the uh, cultural tradition of uh, Milan is not something that is uh, related with uh, a contemporary innovation but uh, is a sort of uh, um, arriving point uh, because during the centuries uh, the uh, international rulers of this uh, city uh, decided uh, to transform it uh, according to the taste of each time. In this case, uh, among uh, the international rulers, uh, maybe the human who really gave uh, an important uh, and strong input to uh, make Milan a modern and cultural decor was uh, the Empress Maria Teresa d'Austria, the same woman who decided uh, to open uh, the Teatro alla Scala. In this case, uh, she decided uh, to uh, transformed an old uh, monastery that uh, uh, had uh, uh, become state uh, property after the order of Jesuits were disbanded uh, to house several of the leading cultural institutes including the Accademia di Belle Arti or Biblioteca Braidense or the important Orto Botanico, the Botanical Garden. The palace was completely redesigned by the hand of uh, Giuseppe Piermarini, the same architect who uh, worked to um, renovate uh, the important royal palace of Milan. And in this case, uh, you can see that Piermolini relies uh, a sort of uh, icon of uh, neoclassicism in the heart of uh, Milan, a perfect place to house paintings and masterpieces. This is one of the reasons why inside this important building was a house the first nucleus of what um, will be became uh, well known as Pinacoteca di Brera or Paintings Gallery, one of the most important museums of the world. Originally, the Pinacoteca was realized just putting together different kind of collection. First of all, uh, the masterpieces that were collected to help uh, the students of uh, the Academy of Art to um, discover the idea of beauty generated during the past and then with other kind of uh, masterpieces related with, uh, in particular, a religious theme. Now, Brera is uh, a sort of uh, paradise of art. For us, is uh, the perfect place where we can study the transformation of the history of art during uh, the centuries, starting with uh, um, the masterpieces realized during uh, the medieval age in accord with uh, the Gothic style and arriving uh, to the suggestion of the contemporary art uh, and uh, um, have uh, in this way uh, the opportunity to talk about uh, the history of art uh, that uh, in, uh, in, in a sort of uh, reinterpretation a uh, history of uh, humanities. In uh, particular, uh, among uh, this important collection 
I choose for you uh, a small selection of masterpieces that help us to understand the importance of this museum because it's a real a paradise of paintings because you have to imagine that among the name of artists you can find inside the collection of Brera names as Caravaggio, Mantegna, Zandomenighi, Hayez, Buccioni, uh, Bellini, Gentile da Fabriano and so on, a sort of real paradise and uh, Olympus of uh, the art and the artist that help us to try to understand uh, which is uh, the exact value of uh, uh, an important collection of art. The starting point uh, of uh, this selection is related with uh, this masterpiece by Andrea Mantegna Lamentazione su Cristo Morto or Lamentation over the Death Christ is an important uh, masterpiece realized uh, uh, during uh, the last part of the 15th century, probably realized uh, just uh, for uh, the private devotion of the artist and from, for uh, its private uh, chapel. Um, it is uh, a sort of important uh, representation of a traditional uh, scheme with uh, other and new we point uh, of the observer on the uh, body of Christ because it's important to notice that in this case we are part of this important representation part of the characters of the scene we can really observe the humanity of this body from a different point of view so important not only to celebrate the faith and the religious aspect of this masterpiece but also to um, um, know and to feel the importance of the relationship between the life and death and really to observe Christ as a human, not only as a God. Um, another interpretation of uh, a traditional theme related with uh, the same idea was uh, realized by Giovanni Bellini, an important uh, artist who works, uh, used to work uh, in the area around uh, Venice, as we have already seen together, but also the brother-in-love of uh, Mantegna. In this case, uh, he um, realized a uh, um, reinterpretation of the traditional theme of the Pietas. And it's important uh, to notice uh, that uh, he uh, used to work uh, together with Mantegna, but in this case, uh, he was able to create uh, something uh, um, modern, uh, something related uh, with uh, the plasticity of uh, the figures, and in particular, reusing uh, a medieval uh, scheme of interpretation of the Pietas. Here he is uh, able to create uh, something that uh, is a sort of a starting point for modernity uh, that you can see exactly just uh, seeing uh, the relationship between uh, the mother the holy virgin mary and uh, the body of uh, christ look to the face uh, of uh, the mother completely dominated uh, by uh, pain and uh, other kind of uh, feelings and also um, she is uh, um, so near to uh, the body of uh, uh, her son to uh, could help him to uh, be alive just for the few parts of uh, his life. 
um, another important uh, masterpiece uh, of uh, this museum is uh, uh, this work by Caravaggio, uh, work that uh, for uh, a long time was uh, believed a copy, but uh, after different kind of uh, taste was uh, proved that is uh, an original one. It's uh, um, a sort of a second version of uh, another one uh, realized uh, during the first part uh, of the 17th century and now houses inside the National Gallery uh, in uh, London. Uh, but this second version is a sort of testament of uh, Caravaggio because uh, it's a sort of a reinterpretation of this uh, theme, the subtle uh, hemnos, uh, and uh, um, all the details that are so characteristic of the work of Caravaggio, including uh, the use of light and uh, the uh, details of the faces of the characters, are here a sort of uh, um, perfect photograph representation uh, of uh, one uh, specific moment. And you can look uh, to Christ and to the hand of Christ that uh, is uh, um, uh, represented in the moment after the uh, uh, last part of the dinner and is uh, quite interested also to notice that all uh, the ends and uh, the details the on the table are part of this uh, representation that uh, is a sort of theatrical representation of a moment. Um, in one way, Caravaggio is a master who uh, is uh, able to transform paintings in something else, something that uh, centuries uh, later will be called cinema. But uh, the uh, Pinacoteca di Berra houses uh, also this uh, uh, masterpiece that, uh, as you can read, uh, one of the emblematic uh, images of uh, this museum and also the most widely reproduced uh, Italian painting of the 19th century. It's important to notice that uh, this is not just a romantic theme, but it's a sort of <coughs> of uh, important uh, um, poster uh, related uh, with uh, the idea of uh, uh, the love for the motherland and realized that during the last part of that dramatic period uh, that uh, is uh, related with uh, the idea of Italy as uh, an uh, entire and unique state. And in this case, uh, this uh, uh, metaphorical theme was realized using uh, uh, the neo-medieval uh, uh, atmosphere that was so popular during uh, that uh, period and so in accord with uh, the romantic uh, taste. But uh, mm, the same kind of uh, suggestion, not the political one, but uh, the representation of something that uh, is uh, related with uh, uh, the intimacy of uh, uh, the scene um, is uh, uh, part of this uh, masterpiece uh, called Il Ricciolo or La Tolette by Federico Zandomeneghi, one of the masters who uh, chose at the end of the 19th century Paris has uh, the perfect uh, city to uh, live. In this case, uh, you have to remember that Paris during that time was uh, the city of uh, Impressionism and of uh, the um, revolution about uh, art uh, in general. And San Domenici there found uh, the iconographical uh, suggestion of uh, Renoir or Degas, and he was uh, able to generate uh, this uh, kind of uh, 
poetry related with the small things of everyday life, something that is able to create um, feelings of simplicity and uh, um, quiet and uh, uh, peaceful atmosphere just using a short kind of techniques to realize it. In particular, in this case, look to the different colors that he used to create this image because you can see that he is a sort of interpreter of the, these peculiar techniques called divisionism. The same was uh, the same technique uh, was used by Umberto Boccioni to create uh, this important uh, Milanese masterpiece, a uh, reinterpretation of uh, a crowded situation inside uh, the gallery and uh, one uh, important uh, step uh, for the development of the contemporary art. It's important also to notice that in this case, uh, Boccioni uh, had arrived uh, uh, to Milan after several journeys in Europe and he found um, in Milan a peculiar atmosphere during uh, the first part of the 20th century, full of different um, foolish aspects, including the technological spirit that will be um, the base for the futurism mo movement. And in this case, Boccioni realized a masterpiece related with uh, the futurism with the aim to create something that uh, could really um, talk about uh, dynamism and uh, um, real effects of light. You can see that uh, here uh, all the characters uh, are uh, just uh, realized using a different kind of uh, colors and the idea is a sort of of a huge um, movement of people inside a public space. The last masterpiece that I choose for you is uh, related with the important figures of Pellizza da Volpedo. Uh, the masterpiece in this case is called the Fiumana and is an unfinished masterpiece. Um, that uh, basically will be uh, the sort of uh, preparatory work to create the well-known masterpiece Quarto Stato that is uh, the masterpiece uh, really uh, well known all around the world by Pellizza da Volpedo. Um, the theme is the same, the mass of striking libraries and it's a sort of a representation of the history because because in, you are seeing in this case that part of the society so uh, important uh, for the industrialization of Europe or of the world during that time but also of Milan that was uh, one of the most important industrial city of Italy and uh, is a sort of representation of the inexorability of the history because in front of us there is this mass that um, he is uh, just arriving to the power and there is no possibility to stop this uh, aspect. And also the second element is related with the idea, the political idea, uh, to create a sort of um, other kind of world with uh, the poor people uh, together with uh, uh, the rich one uh, could uh, stay together uh, on the same estate with uh, the same um, possibility to be represented uh, inside the um, government of the estate. But Milan is also a city uh, that was uh, also 
be transformed during uh, the last part uh, of uh, our history. And uh, I choose for you this example of uh, urban uh, development, that is the last one open in Milan to, uh, um, in relation with uh, the huge organization of Expo uh, 2015 and uh, is uh, a new interpretation of Square, just uh, 20 minutes walking far from Brera but uh, in the area of uh, the uh, Garibaldi stop. In particular, this uh, square was uh, created to be an innovative and futuristic uh, square. And uh, <clears throat> this is the result of uh, an important urban redevelopment project around uh, the uh, Garibaldi station that was uh, uh, once uh, a sort of uh, um, suburban area uh, not uh, so um, good uh, to uh, live. In particular, uh, Piazza Gaiolenti was uh, created to be uh, the meeting point between the historic center of Milan and the financial district and uh, it was uh, realized uh, uh, and named after this important architect Guy Aulenti and uh, realized with a shape, a circular shape and stands six meters above road level. Um, the square was also <coughs> realized in accord uh, with uh, ecological uh, principles. Um, this means that, uh, as you can see using this picture, um, around the square uh, were uh, realized two orders of roofing built in iron, wood and glass and uh, completely completely covered with photovoltaic panels that provide uh, energy to all the nearby towers. Towers that were realized by uh, an important international uh, architect, uh, an Argentinian architect who used to live uh, in USA, Cesar Pelli, um, an architect uh, died uh, last uh, year, who also realized uh, this important uh, uh, skyscraper, the tallest uh, skyscraper of uh, Italy, the Unicredit Tower, an important palace that closed the last part of um, Piazza Gai Aulenti, realized uh, to be the headquarter of uh, Unicredit Bank banking group and relies also to be a sort of reinterpretation of the traditional um, monument of Milan, the cathedral, because it was realized with this important stainless steel spire on the top that is a sort of reinterpretation in a contemporary key of uh, the Gothic uh, suggestion. Um, this square, together with uh, Corso Como and Porta Nuova Garibaldi, uh, really is uh, um, the heart of the largest urban redevelopment operation ever completed uh, in Milan. And uh, there is uh, another important building that I want uh, uh, to share with you. It is uh, called uh, the Vertical Forest. Uh, and uh, is a sort of uh, a reinterpretation of the um, possibility of nature to come back uh, to uh, the city and uh, to be a sort of a live system in, to, in the center of uh, uh, Milan in particular, but in the center or in generally of uh, other in different cities uh, all around the world. It was uh, realized by the study of Stefano Boeri uh, and uh, is a sort of uh, um, archetypical uh, building realized to be 
the prototype uh, for uh, a new format uh, of uh, architectural biodiversity. In particular, uh, these uh, um, two important uh, res residential uh, towers uh, were uh, realized to be the perfect uh, reinterpretation of uh, a house uh, not only for humans uh, but also for uh, trees, plants, birds uh, and other kind uh, of uh, uh, animals uh, and insects uh, that uh, you can find uh, uh, inside uh, nature. But it's a sort of uh, real uh, ecosystem uh, that uh, could live in the center of Milan, producing oxygen. Um, in this case, uh, it's a sort of uh, important uh, and uh, peculiar reinterpretation of a forest um, related uh, with a different part uh, of uh, the building, just uh, realized to be a sort of uh, uh, new kind of uh, resident that uh, let us imagine another possible way to live inside uh, our cities. But uh, the area of uh, uh, Piazza Garulenti Square is just the last one of, uh, al also in this case, a long period of tradition of uh, transformation of uh, industrial areas into something uh, new, something modern, something that uh, could help us to imagine another uh, kind of uh, art and future. Um, one uh, of uh, ex one example of uh, these uh, ideas is related with uh, the Pirelli Hangar Bicocca, uh, an important uh, place uh, today, one of uh, the largest uh, exhibition space in Europe. Originally, just uh, um, an important industrial space that was completely transformed into another district of Milan, but also into another interpretation of museum, a sort of um, industrial interpretation of museum, uh, a place where uh, the huge spaces originally used to produce um, different kind of materials or elements were in this case reused to house important masterpieces realized to uh, be part of the permanent collection or the for a temporary collection in particular this, uh, the, the history of this uh, place uh, is related with uh, the Breda, a company uh, incorporated in uh, 1886 by uh, the engineer Ernesto Breda, who decided to move it uh, uh, to the Bicocca district, this uh, part that was uh, during that uh, century um, outside uh, Milan, as you can see, using this uh, originally uh, original uh, uh, picture of that uh, time. After Breda, other important uh, brands uh, decided uh, to do uh, the same, including uh, Pirelli, Folk and Marelli. And quickly this area became the important uh, industrial district of Milan. Uh, so important that, uh, in particular, the Breda, during uh, uh, the first part of uh, the um, 20th century, produced uh, different kind uh, of uh, products including uh, railway carriers, uh, electric and steam locomotives, boilers, but also airplanes uh, as uh, the same that you can see uh, with this uh, picture that were used uh, during uh, the First World War. Uh, at the end of the 20th century, these, uh, uh, the uh, Breda was uh, taken over by the Ansaldo Group and uh, uh, the historic uh, industrial areas gradually began uh, to be decommissioned. 
Um, this uh, uh, moment was uh, the starting point of a new kind of adventure uh, related with uh, the idea to transform the, the area of uh, Bicocca into a Bicocca project, a sort of uh, a new district uh, inside uh, Milan uh, full of uh, all that different uh, um, kind of buildings realized to um, transform uh, a sort of death area in uh, a renovated area of the city with uh, university buildings, uh, cultural centers, uh, administration centers and also private uh, house. In particular, uh, one important uh, uh, part of uh, this uh, project uh, is uh, related with uh, uh, the open of uh, this important foundation, the Pirelli Angler Bicocca, and uh, for uh, the uh, opening of this uh, museum um, was uh, realized by the important German artist Anselm Kiefer this uh, uh, amazing masterpiece called The Seven Heavenly Palace. The um, masterpiece was uh, realized uh, between 2004 to 2015 and was uh, uh, inspired uh, by an important uh, and traditional uh, Hebrew uh, book called uh, the Book of Palaces or Sanctuaries um, wrote uh, around the 5th uh, century AD. In particular, uh, this uh, uh, important uh, masterpiece was realized uh, to be the touchable uh, uh, representation of uh, the path of spiritual initiation. The idea is uh, to um, realize a sort of uh, important uh, representation of uh, the path that uh, anyone should uh, do to uh, arrive to meet uh, God or spirituality in general. And uh, uh, he realized uh, seven different kind of tower um, related with uh, seven different uh, feelings and uh, with uh, seven different works that uh, the, the human and humanity in general uh, should uh, make to arrive uh, to the uh, divine. Um, one of uh, the symbols that he decided to use is uh, related with melancholy and uh, he used a different kind of material uh, to create uh, this kind of uh, towers including uh, lead that uh, traditionally is uh, considered uh, the material related with uh, melancholy. Um, the meanings of this important uh, uh, work is uh, actually related with three different uh, aspects. First of all, to give us uh, a new interpretation of ancient uh, Hebrew religion then um, is a sort of a representation of the ruins of Western civilization after the Second World War. You have to remember that Kiefer is, an, is a German artist. He was born in Germany in 1945, the same year um, when uh, the Second World War and it has to, uh, this means that he was uh, uh, really near to all the decadence uh, that is possible to imagine uh, during that time. The third uh, meaning of uh, this masterpiece is related with us and uh, with uh, a sort of uh, possible interpretation of a uh, uh, post-apocalyptic future um, death is uh, something uh, about uh, we have to reflect and uh, also something that maybe we can transform in uh, a sort of other scenery in front of us uh, just starting to think about the present. 
another uh, suggestion in this uh, direction uh, is uh, represented by uh, this uh, work realized by an Italian artist Fausto Melotti originally uh, to uh, destinated uh, to be in Florence and now in the Hunger um, Pirelli Hunger Bigoc. Uh, this work is called La Sequenza and uh, is a sort of uh, reinterpretation uh, from uh, the viewpoint uh, of these artists uh, of uh, three important uh, elements related with uh, in general with uh, culture um, first of all uh, the suggestion uh, from the ancient greek uh, architecture in particular of uh, the temple that you can find in athens or in sisi uh, the masterpiece of piero della francesca uh, the paintings in particular of piero della francesca and the music of bach that is an important uh, interpreter of the perfection of uh, symmetry um, and uh, geometry uh, in uh, uh, relation with uh, music and in particular the aim of this uh, artist was uh, to realize uh, a sort of uh, um, interpretation of musical art something that uh, is a sort of uh, mm, real uh, huge uh, musical instrument uh, and uh, that was realized just with uh, identical uh, modules so with uh, three levels of death and uh, in alternation alternation of solids and voids to create something that uh, could be compared to uh, a sort of uh, symphony but in this case just played by natural elements light wind and uh, the idea of uh, uh, the rain uh, and uh, other different uh, sounds of nature in particular uh, this uh, masterpiece was uh, realized uh, to be the perfect uh, passageway in front uh, of uh, the uh, Angar Bikok. It's a sort of uh, uh, symbolic threshold. Death is uh, there to symbolize the eternity of uh, art and uh, the uh, possibility for the man to celebrate uh, the life using uh, other kind of uh, suggestion and uh, realizing other kind of uh, cathedral uh, that uh, um, in uh, uh, that are in uh, a sort of uh, development uh, always in accord uh, with uh, the different suggestion of uh, each time in this case, uh, the uh, work uh, of uh, uh, Milotti is uh, a sort of uh, reinterpretation of the idea of a cathedral in the, the desert that is uh, full of meanings, really about uh, history, lives, and uh, all the peculiarities of the humanity that maybe are uh, something that we have to protect uh, in this particular world uh, in this moment. Um, it's a sort of uh, uh, photograph of life and uh, it's important to notice that uh, this is part of the cultural heritage of Milan together with uh, other different uh, examples including uh, the cathedral uh, or the uh, sforzesco castle but uh, all that different uh, elements are part of the idea that art is here to talk about us about the humanity um, 
at this point I stop to share with you my screen to say thank you very much to you and uh, in particular Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. We will see again to discover together other important cities all around the world. Thank you very much and bye bye. See you the next time.